Hello, everyone, and welcome to the first Hey and I meeting, Kubernetes Networking Interface, or as we've been kind of colloquially calling it, Kubernetes Networking Reimagined. Um, this is a meeting about a KEP that has kind of been uh, just started. It's in draft state, and we're thinking about trying to move it into a working group to work on it and move it forward. It is a, this is technically a Kubernetes meeting, so it falls under the Kubernetes Code of Conduct, which basically boils down to everyone be nice to one another, so please be nice to one another. Um, if you want to ask questions or interject, please use the raise hand feature in Zoom. That helps us to kind of keep things organized. We actually have a pretty big turnout today. Um, it's an open agenda. The agenda is in the calendar invite. We can share it in the chat room, too, if anybody doesn't have it. Uh, please feel free to add items to the agenda. Um, also, at the top of the agenda, which I'll start sharing, actually, uh, we do have um, a section for putting your name in. And since this is a new project, uh, it would be particularly helpful to have people put their names and like information and we kind of keep track of like who's really interested in this. We know that a lot of people are probably here just to see what's going on and that's totally fine. Uh, we came up with some agenda items to discuss for today to kind of get started. Um, so yeah, with that, uh, Shane, we'll kind of- can you toss a link to that in the chat, please? Yes, I will. Um, or somebody who- I, I did I'm it. sure somebody will. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, sir. With, with that, um, We'll just kind of go ahead and roll into it. Mike, do you want to kind of talk about the cap a little bit? We have a first thing to basically just see who's read the cap. Um, and we wanted to kind of just kind of see who's read it and who, who feels like it looks good or it's not really representing them. That's what we kind of wanted to start with today. Yeah, I guess it makes sense. Yeah, if people haven't looked over it, it'd be good to, yeah, not, uh, give it a quick glance to kind of figure out, you know, what our current goals and motivation are, or summary and motivation and goals are, and that's kind of what we're trying to iron out. Particularly, we're trying to figure out the what and the why versus uh, from the community perspective, and you know, not particularly discuss the how. Looks like we have a hand raised. Sorry, I just noticed that uh, up. Go for it. So, what did you say? Did somebody raise their hand? Sorry, I'm trying to fix the 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 notes here. One sec. I, I yeah, want to be able to hand. use Hands. I just wanted to ask how different is the kept in the presentation because I read the I I checked the presentation linked in a thread so I didn't read the cap but wanted to, to see if I need to kind of read it now while we're speaking or the presentation is enough. Okay. Everybody see the thing? No, we don't see anything. Okay, let me fix that. What are you trying right, to bring share? I'm trying to share my my Firefox. I'm sorry. Try again. Here, I can share it. Just because you your bandwidth is limited. Yeah, go ahead. Let's do that. All right. Do um, we all uh, see it? I was thinking we would talk. I would. I was thinking we would actually just take a quick peek at the cap, and then we can link it. I'll link it in the docs real quick because it seems like some people might be here. Potentially not even knowing that there was a cap yet or that there was a PR. So, okay, somebody linked it. So. Take it away, Mike. My machine is getting super slow. Sorry. Um, can everybody hear me right now? I hear you. Okay. So cool. far, so good. Uh, All right, yeah, I, my mouse is moving. So everybody can see the screen. So she, what did you have in mind here just for me to quickly walk through it or? Yeah, I mean, you, you already kind of mentioned that we uh, are focused on the what and why. So there's no implementation here right now, just motivation and goals and user stories. So maybe we'll just kind of go through. I think some of this is kind of in the midst of a rewrite, but I was thinking maybe you could go through the summary motivation, maybe riff a little bit, and uh, we'll just see if anybody wants to pop up and has questions. Otherwise, we can move on to the next topic once everybody's kind of had a, a chance to take a peek at it. Yeah, definitely. So 
the gist here is that we want to take a look at what we have as a current architecture uh, where the network setup and teardown is done at the container runtime and see what it looks like when we bring that into Kubernetes. So hence why it's called KNI, not, you know, CNI again. So the gist is that we want to provide, you know, an API that can, you know, provide status, set up, tear down, you know, the ability to attach an interface and detach an interface from the pod network namespace that's driven by the kubelet, not the network, I mean, the container runtime. And throughout the years, you know, we've talked about like, you know, CNI 2.0 being closer to Kubernetes because right now it's a little disjointed in that all the networking is kind of scattered across the stack from Kubernetes down to the container runtime, down to the low level runtime. So we're trying to take a look at and say, hey, how does this look like if we try to drive it from the Kubernetes perspective versus scattered across the stack? So that's kind of where we've been, you know, thinking about it from, you know, that perspective. Uh, and, you know, we've proposed, you know, gRPC and a few items to kind of start looking at, like, what's currently wrong or where can we, you know, improve the current uh, approach to Kubernetes networking? You know, we obviously, the number one goal here is really to design a cool looking t-shirt. However, we really started to look at, you know, what's the current problems, you know, there's a lot of, you know, talk about eliminating the need to exec binaries, replace it with a different approach, you know, making the troubleshooting easier by, you know, having logs accessible via kubectl, you know, improving the network pod startup, uh, ideally packaging all your files inside the container image so you're no longer mounting up CNI bin and more, um, you know, providing an API to indicate, you know, network readiness for a node as right now it's, uh, you know, driven by the presence of a file. Dan, we already got a, a hand raised. Sorry about that. I didn't see you raising your hand. I was just going to say be before you scroll down to the uh, goals section, um, can, can, can you throw away everything you have in the summary section and replace it with what you just said before? Yeah. Did we re we're recording this, right? Yeah. Well, I'll play it back and update it. Did you like that one better? Yes. Oh, okay. Well, there we go. We're winning already. Fantastic. This is productive and we're only 13 minutes in. Very good. Did anybody have any questions? Like, yeah, we're, you know, really the effort of this is to take like, what are our current problems? and you know kind of capture those as user stories is effectively what we're trying to do here does anybody have like hey i'm completely confused or i kind of get the gist of what's going down or not wait oh. jane are you already confused i'm confused no, I, I I didn't notice anybody else putting up their hands, so I just wanted to put an extra uh, little twist on this. And that one of the I'm interested in all of this. I'm actually particularly interested in doing an implementation. Um, but at a higher level, I'm I'm very interested in APIs for this. So one of the things I remember in the earliest days of Kubernetes, and that is like literally when it was brand new, um, was working on an ingress controller before you called there was any such thing as an ingress controller and generally just having the feeling of like i wish i i the net i wish the network and its configurations were actually something in the api like that drove me bonkers for a long time and here, so here. For, for this uh this is an effort that i would like and it's in our goals and stuff like that too but with this effort we have an opportunity to potentially fix that um basically have networks and then configurations for networks, maybe with the pods and stuff like that. It's all kind of up in the air right now. Nothing needs to be kind of written in stone at this point on this first meeting. But we have an opportunity to kind of fix that general problem of like, you can see what's going on with the network in the Kubernetes API. And so hopefully that resonates with people as well. 
I actually have a question on. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Doug. So, uh, sorry, uh, just a clarifying question. Shane, did you say that that was written down as one of the goals there? It's in here, yeah. Um, Which line, I, if you don't? I, I, I added it to the branch somewhere, unless we oh, knocked okay. it out in our most recent update. It's in here, because I, I put it in here. Provide Kubernetes APIs for the creation, configuration, and management of interfaces. We, we'll probably have to, at one point, I think that just said, at one point, I think we've changed the goals a couple of times and like clobbered each other's things, but that there is a that goal will be restated in here as well. Like the general goal of wanting networks and their configurations to be actual APIs in Kubernetes. This is just in draft state right now, so we've been kind of going back and forth on the branch, and uh, we'll kind of get that synchronized at some point yeah. before we call it ready. Um, no worries. Yeah, I have been uh, away from my desk for a few days, so I am still catching up on the cap. So thanks for the pointer. Uh, Take it away, whoever I interrupted. Sorry about that. Like... I had a question about, uh, well, we can phrase this either as a question about scope, or we can phrase it as, I'm going to try to introduce some feature creep already, um, depending on your point of view. Shane it's was already talking enormous, about... so go for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Shane Does was talking about the experience. as a user of... story? I, I think it can be phrased as two user stories, actually, and I'm not sure if there is room for these user stories in here or if they should go someplace else. And all joking aside, that's a very serious question. And so I want to phrase that as a question rather than going, oh my God, I want these user stories in here, right? Um, like Shane, I too had the experience of working on an ingress controller back in the early days, long before anything was called an ingress controller. And initially, I vividly remember this. Uh, I, I vividly remember the experience of walking into this and going, "Oh, this will be cool! All I really need to do is interact with this ingress resource, and then I can go and just grab an IP address, and all these great things will happen." And eventually, um, a day or so after that, I realized I had run headlong in the, into the fact that you actually couldn't do that unless you were the one who was providing the cluster, because the whole mechanics of things like getting a global IP address, setting up load balancers and things like that was completely hidden to me as a user of the cluster. Uh, in a similar vein, one of the things that we at Linkerd and other folks with service meshes have to do are things like run CNI plugins so that we can go mess with the routing table so that service meshes gain control over communications. Both of those things could be user stories that land in K&I, where one user story would be, I am a user and I want to grab a globally routable IP address that is plumbed into level four, layer four load balancing machinery that my workload can interact with. And one of those would be, I'm a user creating a service mesh and I want to alter the routing table so that I can seize control of certain things. Do we think that either or both of those user stories belong in here? Or do we think that either or both of those should be completely separate efforts? I hate the idea of like, just keep, like, I, I love what you're saying. And actually both of those are like big thumbs up for me. So I, I think personally, we should add them as user stories now. And then if for some reason we come back and we do some more cycles over the cap and we're like, this is too big, we could potentially break those out and say, okay, this is a separate effort, but I would start by just yeah. kind of making them a part of the story now, personally. Mike, do let, you agree let me that? point out, I'm not going to be offended if the answer is no, this doesn't belong in here. Go spin up your own thing, Flynn. Come on. Um, but it, it seemed like a thing worth asking of this group. Yeah, for sure. Like you're like, I got, I got actually excited when you said these things. Um, <laughs> well, Mike, see, do you agree? We can't hear it? you right now. Oh, can you hear me now? Yeah. Now I can hear you. It, Sheen, you had a process for adding user stories. Did you want to just yep. talk just about that really that. quick? Yeah, let's just jump into that. Do you mind if I share a screen again? Go for it. Oh, stop sharing. So, yeah. So, actually, let's just do a quick roundup on where we are here. So, can everybody see it this time? The doc. Say yes. Nope. Or no. Oh, no. Just a black screen, Shane. Do you want me to share the screen again? 
I'll share. Which screen are we trying to I'll share? I'll try one more time, and then, yeah, you can do it. There we oh, go. It's working. Look at All that. Right, I'm, I'm not going to touch much. I'm just going to scroll. Okay, so we kind of covered. There's an initial cap for those of you who didn't know about it. We're very focused on the what and why. Okay. Um, I'm really, really glad that we're already starting to talk about user stories, but just wanted to kind of catch up on that and say, let's make sure we didn't miss anything. Uh, one of the things we want to make sure is that people are well represented. So we had this idea for doing user stories as like a user story workshops as a part of this. So instead of just one or two people banging on the cap, Mike and I had this, uh, we, we liked the idea of having a lot of people collaborate on the cap. Um, and we were talking about this the other day and basically suggest, suggested we do user story workshops where um, before we take this thing out of draft, we would actually really like to have many people bring their user stories and contribute them directly to the cap. And we've actually set the cap as PR as a rebase merge. So your attribution will be covered and everything. And we want you to be a part of this cap. So Flynn, in your case in particular, I we would love to see you actually put in PRs to add your user stories to the cap and then be a part of it. And it'd be, you know, basically um, join us in trying to see if we can make this effort work. Um, so if you're up for that, great. We'd love to have that. If not, I can try to capture those myself and put those in there. But ideally, I think having people do their, their think, own, like bring their user stories would be very powerful. I think I can do that. Um, I was uh, staring off in weird areas because for a while I lost my Zoom window and couldn't couldn't cope. But yeah, I think I can do that. Very cool. Thank you. Um, so yeah, let's just kind of keep talking about that then. One of the reasons we want to do this is we want to make sure, we know there's going to be a lot of stakeholders, a lot. This is going to be a very big thing. When I brought it up with Bob Killen, he's like, what is this going to be like, IPv6? And I'm like, eh, you know. And so <laughs> um, we're trying to think through the process of how we do this because we know that CAPs have been historically, they can be very nebulous. They can be, um, they can be very... Uh, uh, they can get frozen for long periods of time. We want to make sure that this gets good traction, good velocity. And we think the main way to do that is to have it be a very collaborative effort, like not just a couple of people trying to push the cap forward, but people that have interest and in, have a stake in this being a part of the actual cap. Um, so we're still focused mostly on the what and why. User stories is really big for that. Uh, we were going to propose that in, in some of that can happen here, like it just did, but we were going to propose actually doing some like ad hoc user story workshops on Zoom, like get groups of right around five people, some with some 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 relatively similar interests, maybe pull in one person with a very different interest and just do an hour on Zoom or something like that, or a half hour on Zoom where we just kind of think about our user stories. The idea was to do a couple of these kind of uh, focus fired and then bring those back to the cap. So if you're interested in that, um, we'd love to see you just kind of put your name down in here on the doc saying, yeah, I'd like to sign up for that. Um, and we can kind of we will organize and compile that later and put put together some meetings and join you in. Um, I think we're also Shane. going to do a bigger a bigger one at Paris. We put in a CFP for the contributor summit to do a larger sized one at Paris. What's up? Yeah, like can we can we jump in with questions? Yeah, go for it. So oh, I have two questions. One um, is, I mean, reading this cap, it feels like. There is a lot, a lot of goals there, and you know when when we want to take it. And I read like you know the the approach like we want to go is mostly iterative, and it feels like you know I'm kind of I'm kind of read all these goals, and it feels like you know many 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 different directions, and maybe it's still on the brainstorming side, but I think it is. I think I think going like that wide will make things like you know really slow if if at all. And also, like, you know, a lot of people kind of bringing user stories in. Um, I'm trying to think, like, because we'll need to filter, like, you know, user stories of, like, oh, I'd like to see this. And user stories or our users of our implementations would really like to have this. And it's hard for us to do this. So I'm kind of worried about this going too wide. And, yeah, I'm, I'm I myself a little bit confused when reading all these goals. And I'm kind of not sure what's the first steps of the project is going to be like once it's merged and maybe there's no answer now but kind of kind of no it's very very wise to point out the the potential risks there we're in a draft state we're very we're, we're trying to very much 
be in this brainstorming state right now, right? Like that's, you, you called it. That's exactly what we're trying to do. So I think that the, the, the goal is to collect user stories in the draft state, in a brainstorming state, doesn't necessarily mean all of them end up as part of the goals for this particular cap, but we do want to kind of get all this input so that we can see what matches up, what doesn't. And for the things that might not be good to kind of add to this scope, see if there's other places where that energy can be kind of focused. Um, but for those who kind of need the, the basics of what we're talking about, like a kind of a refocused, a networking interface for Kubernetes that is that has APIs, like in the Kubernetes API and stuff like that, I imagine we'll get pretty close to having most of the user stories kind of inbound um, or in, in, in yeah. within kind of what we're trying to get at. But you're right. We'll keep an eye on it. We're yeah, not so going to just maybe some... get all these user stories, put them in, and then say the cap's ready. That's not the, that's not the idea. It's more like yeah. get them all together, do some more thinking about it, organize it, and then see what what fits because we understand that right now the goal list looks kind of enormous and like i said we're just we're, we're, we're changing it kind of rapidly so oh. that's part of what we wanted so to maybe have one, meeting for was to help with that maybe one one nice thing we could you could put in the cap is like i'd like to understand the idea and like the motivations behind uh, mike who initially proposed this cap or like you know maybe tim or whatever like whoever initially proposed it to see all right this is the base cases and hence why I came up with, and these are all the additional cases where we could also solve maybe within this or within a different project, because there were some in the thread uh, where I where the presentation is in, but reading the cap, I feel like a little bit lost right now. I'm not really sure what was the initial or what were the initial motivation for it, and that's I think one important thing for me at least to understand. Yeah, yeah. and I I think we in this meeting here we can kind of share some of that. I know Mike can. Um, I'll share a little bit um, just to speak directly to it. I think there's a user story for this, or if there's not, uh, it's something that I'll, I'll have in a, a branch somewhere. Um, telcos. So as a, as a chair of SIG network, one of the things that I've heard a lot is that telcos have run into frustrations with Kubernetes. Um, telcos and companies working with telcos have this, uh, come into Kubernetes and generally end up with their own like uh, CRDs that they have to manage for their networking stack and want to do things that are kind of alien in the Kubernetes world, like manage their egress very tightly, very highly controlled egress. So one of the earliest motivations for this came from uh, a group that was actually part of Gateway API that created an egress GEP. GEP is a gateway enhancement proposal, which is basically KEPS for Gateway API for those who don't know. And their, um, their whole purpose there was to, uh, one sec, this thing keeps bu 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 pinging me and it's irritating me. So their whole purpose there was to have completely controlled egress from the pod out of a gateway um, to wherever it needs to go in an external network. And they need to have full control over that network path. In current Kubernetes, it's kind of weird to try to do such a thing. Like you could fire out of anywhere, you know, really when you're trying to do egress. So that was something they were trying to do through the gateway API project. We kind of realized it was a hard thing to grow inside of gateway API because gateway API is very strongly focused on layer seven ingress right now. Um, so they are a part, uh, I don't know if, if uh, Philip Klatt ended up in here, but he in particular was one of the people interested in this that's kind of a part of this effort to uh, start thinking about how we could do that at like, can you configure the routing table for a pod as something that you can do in Kubernetes, uh, uh, in Kubernetes API, uh, that kind of thing. Does that make sense? Yeah, that, that makes sense. So more of a concrete kind of use case. Um, yeah, I'm, uh, so, okay. So, Mike, did you want to add anything to that? Yeah, I was going to, like, flip the question around. And how do I say, Lo Loyor? How do I say your name? I don't want to pronounce it wrong. Yeah, yeah, Lior. But you can do, yeah, just go. I was yeah. kind of curious, just to rephrase the question, when you read uh, looked at the presentation and then you looked at the cap, Specifically, where did you find yourself a little bit like confused? Because that will be helpful in me restating um, things because it definitely can come off a little bit ambiguous. So just to give a specific so I can help uh, iron out the cap, that'll be great. Yeah, just just you know, one thing to important to mention is that I just right now uh, was aware there there is this cap like at the beginning of the meeting, so I didn't like. Totally read it, but like when looking at the goals together and 
also myself in my screen, it feels there are a lot, a lot of goals, and that's where I, I felt lost. Whereas in the thread, um, you know, also a lot of people like you know I remember Antonio and a couple more people kind of added um, questions and clarifications, and they were it was a little bit more. Um, sorry for the general response though, but it's still like it was a little bit more like I understood a little bit more where where did you come from and what you say. All right, like. We don't need to bake it in the uh, controller in the container runtime. We need to do X and this cause Y. So, so yeah, that, that's where like I want to understand your original pain points and not like potential weight areas for extensions, which could be nice, but it's just you know, it's just like yeah, I'm trying to understand the, the original focus in order to kind of tackle it in my head. Tracking. Okay. Yeah. And. To re just to give some of my just thought process here is that over the years, you know, I've looked at the CNI and, you know, answered, you know, probably dozens of, you know, not hundreds of questions and said, all right, what's the current theme of where people get confused around Kubernetes networking? And then also address their pain points from an operational and, you know, like DevOps, just various uh, people saying like, I'm very confused about why, wh how does the CNI even work today? Because, you know, we have binaries on disk, they're not deployed, they're deployed via init containers and more, you know, how does the node actually get marked ready? You know, most people don't know, it's actually two conditions. Uh, People don't actually get very confused about when something is execing another binary and passing some environment variables and more. So that's how the goals kind of got uh, put in here and they're very specific. And this is my first cap. So I didn't know if I should make them very specific here. And that's where I said, hey, you know, the Kubernetes approach is really package everything in the pod, not have something mounted on the host file system. And that was actually an area of one, not only confusion, but a pain point because everybody was saying, well, how do I deploy these? Oh, it's deployed by a daemon set and it's left behind. So one of the goals was like, well, let's get rid of that pain point, package everything, say in the container image. And then people are like uh, very unhappy about like, hey, well, the only way I can mark my node, the the network ready, was a file on disk. The presence of a file on disk marked that network ready. And I was like, well, it probably needs an API that's a little bit, uh, you know, can provide more flexibility to the user. So those were just items that I just started checking off. I was like, all right, well, people don't like the configuration on disk. Well, let's use a native uh, object and an, a very idiomatic approach for configuration in Kubernetes is a config map. You know, and these are obviously like implementation details, but it was very much let's look at very specific items and just say this is a goal. We don't want this anymore, or we're going to improve this. Um, you know, down to like improve pod startup time. If you look at the demos, or if you haven't, I can always show them to you later is that one takes three seconds to start up, another one takes 30 seconds to start up. So, you know, trying to be quantitative or say, hey, we're gonna improve the pod network startup by 95% or something of that nature. So it was very much just trying to say, hey, what is wrong? Let's get that as a goal. And maybe it's uh, too specific in there. Yeah, it's funny, Shane pointed out, it's like, this may be too many goals. And I think they're just very specific goals um, and they could be more high level. However, then it was like where to draw the line of being very specific versus being very vague. And Dan Winship is like, you know, the resident expert of like, you know, best practices of kept writing if he's, he's still here. And another one was like, you know, looking at the current network setup, you know, one I said earlier, it's spread across the whole stack. It's very hard to do things in some cases, especially like looking at Kata, where, you know, if I were a reader of the code and a lot of my motivation was, hey, let me put my uh, feet in the shoes of a person that's not very familiar with the stack, and I'm just going to read the code. Most people, probably 99% of people would never know 
that Kata is actually doing extra networking setup and teardown, part of the start task operation of container D. So, and the process isn't very uniform. So I think for, you know, having two separate approaches for, you know, non-virtualized and virtualized low level runtimes is probably cumbersome from an operations uh, perspective and trying to have a uniform approach is better. Having one approach versus, you know, a scattered approach is, you know, how I was looking at this. So that's kind of like my motivation here. Uh, I know it was long winded here, but that's how I kind of came up with these goals. Um, was just looking at some of our current and then, you know, chipping away and being specific. So Dan Winship has like some, you know, two cents to be like, hey, goals should be very specific or they could be vague, you know, or always interested in that yeah we talked yesterday mike and i did about potentially because we just updated those goals again and added a bunch from some of dan's feedback but we talked about potentially even kind of going for a lot less goals higher level goals after we take all the current goals and work them into more specific user stories and you know do that kind of comp compilation of user stories that we just talked about where not everything will stick but to try to think through it a little bit because we're in that uh we're in that kind of mode right now and Dan Winship, yeah, yeah. oh, Ben, oh, sorry. Yeah, lawyer, you can finish then. Ben has, has had his hand raised for a while. No, I'm saying that all makes sense and I appreciate the uh, clarifications. Yeah, thank yeah, you for your I questions. Think... You're very wise to, you know, think about how we can make sure we're not going to scope balloon, right? Especially in an upstream kind of kept situation where, where things take a long time anyway. So thank you. Yeah, and I, I think Mike actually said what I was going to say, which is good to hear. Uh, op, focus, focusing on the operational simplifications of what we've got as the base case, I think is what I want to see. Like I'm, you know, on the solo and Istio side, like in Cilium stuff, like we want these CNI plugins to interact better than they have in the past. It's been very fraught. We want that to improve. The operational story is, is tricky and has a lot of corner cases. And I think most of what Flynn has talked about is something we would also want. But I think for like the initial iteration, it would be good to say here, if we just do the base case or you know, essentially replace what is already there with this model, here are the operational pain points that will be reduced. Uh, and then have a separate section below, which is, and once we've done that, here are all the magic things we could do. But like, I think, I think it's important to like focus on the operational benefits, as, as Mike said, of the base case and things like you know, being able to have things running within the node reliably assert things about the state of the network or the CNI itself. Like the, to me, that's the base case that I think removes a lot of the operational snafus that we have today. There's a lot more we can do, but I'm perfectly content, I think, to wait on that and just get the baseline in there and, and focus on like, you know, operationally CNI as it sits today has problems, this solves these three things with that. Uh, and then we can have a separate section for like, you know, what we can do later, which I think we're all excited about, but I agree, I don't want to overscope. That's it. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, I, I I put a comment down or I put a note down with what you said. I kind of uh, uh, reworded it a little bit, but please do change that and add anything that you want so that properly represents what you're trying to say. Uh, so that the same goes for anybody that I've uh, taken notes on. I the notes are kind of a uh, a riff. So go ahead. Yeah, I think yeah, people have the th one of the themes that I've been hearing is like yeah, like scope and more. And I think it's important that we note that, you know, feature parity probably will be more or less the MVP here. And all, you know, yeah, our MVP should be solving a lot of these operational uh, issues. And, you know, if we get significant improvement from that, that's great. And then all the new bells and whistles that we can start attaching on. So like, say, as a feature add, that could be... Um, that uh, off top of my head, uh, updating an attachment or an interface. There you go. For lack of better, you know, clarity here, that would be probably not an MVP item. However, you know what? How we decide our scope should be very quantitative here. I believe that, you know, if everybody has agreement on the same user story and goal, that should move faster than a user story that only one person wants. 
So if we have a quantitative approach and we can actually prove it with evidence, I think that is how we should drive this effort versus vague, you know, hand wavy approaches and say, hey, this is will solve everybody's like if it's not if you can't prove it, then we should not really prioritize it because it may not be solving a problem here. So that's just how kind of I want to control scope and then break it down from, you know, MVPs, feature parity, then we have all the new, uh, the new hotness, you know, throw the spinning rims on it. Yeah, and I think that speaks directly to your point, Benjamin, which is uh, um, that through a quantitative and evidence-based approach, we should be able to show these are the exact pain points that exist, and here is exactly the ways in which we can make those better, which, is uh is a good point. Yep. Cool. Are there any other hands up? I can't see the zoom at the moment. No, I don't think there's any more no more hand raise. Uh cool. what was our next item on the agenda? Yeah, that's Calls, calls out for participation. I just want to make sure we didn't miss anything because this got uh, really interesting really fast. We got 20 minutes left. Uh, we talked about just kind of going over the KEP, what, what's there now. We talked about the fact that what we're looking for is collaboration on that KEP from many different people. Um, we want to make sure it's everybody's KEP. And then moving the KEP into provisional, we kind of talked about that. The user workshops, that's where we were right now. Okay, so calls out for participation. Again, just to reiterate, uh, Mike and I um, have been kind of, we're trying to facilitate, but we really want this to be everyone's cap. Um, we want you to feel like you have a, a stake in it, a sense of equity. You have your own commits in it, that kind of thing. So over the next few weeks, months, we're looking at doing things like, uh, I think we're looking at doing, we, we put in a CFP for Contributor Summit to talk a little bit about the KNI. We would love to have people do things like that, like bring it up at meetups and stuff like that as the project progresses. Um, but obviously things like adding user stories, helping us with these brainstorming sessions, working on the goals, kind of making sure things align and advocating for yourself so that your interests are being represented properly is going to be a very helpful to making things move as quickly as possible because this will be a, this is a longer term investment. This isn't going to be like a super quick turnaround. Um, yeah. And then there's just other smaller things too. Like if you want to help run these meetings and stuff like that, we'd love to have people do that um, because it's all about having, uh, having it be a very, having it be a very much a community driven thing and not just a couple of people trying to drive it because it won't succeed. Um, not something this big if it's kind of a smaller group trying to drive it. I think that's pretty much all we had on the agenda for today. So we have some time left just to just to kind of chat or we can give it back if nobody wants to chat. Anybody have a user story off the top of their head? Um I you I have I guess I have stuff um both, but uh yeah, user story off the top of my head. I'm just gonna give this free form instead of a uh, official agile style or whatever, but this is something that I've been thinking about um as this is in relation to software that I already help to maintain and develop the spec for, but um multi CNI is the perspective I'm coming from this. So something that um, is sort of a like um, architectural challenge with multi CNI is it gets a CNI request right as the pod is created and then it stops that request for the amount of time that it takes for it to query the API and do all of the things that it needs to do and then later um, the pod is created but if something along that path fails, um, it's a bad experience for everyone, including at me as a maintainer. Um, when I'm debugging it and I have to say, hey, here's uh, here's the reason why it failed. Well, it's not actually multi-CNI, it's your API server is overloaded, or it's your primary network 
failed. Um, it's um, it's all of these things. So something that I would love to improve in my life is having maybe uh, like more better visibility of the say pod object that's incoming to me or I don't know, but it's a problem that I'm thinking about. Mike, go ahead. Yeah, and those are some of those operational concerns because like, let's just walk through your example. Like, yeah, you've kubectl to apply your busy box pod. You know, it, it gets binded to a particular node. So now the kubelet's, you know, doing its run pod sandbox down to the container runtime to the, you know, CNI add and something, once that CNI add goes, you know, we start executing, we exec into that binary, then it blows up somewhere. And, you know, right now, a lot of people do have the, you know, like a very shim approach to the CNI binary, but you don't actually have visibility of what's really going on there other than you can cat some logs, you can get it through like Prometheus. It's not the most direct way because really the idiomatic approach, you know, for, you know, an operations person is like, what's kubectl describing kubectl logs on that particular pod in question? And that was one of the nice things about running the, you know, said network runtime, which could easily package the CNI binaries or whatever you want to do. And you can easily get those logs and, you know, observability really should be a first class citizen in this because we should be able to measure the delta between, you know, troubleshooting the current and troubleshooting, you know, the KNI world and going from there. Because yeah, a lot of things can happen. Uh, but you know, seeing like what specifically was passed down to the, you know, the network runtime is very visible in two locations. Obviously the kubelet would be a place to look, but also the network uh, runtime running as a daemon set is another place that easily could shed some light on, you know, what's actually going on. Does that help? It's actually one of the goals. Um, the third one from the from the bottom. It's probably not as verbose as what you want. So if you have a suggestion or want to add. Uh. I know we just no, think the is, goals are verbose, but you know, it may be. Yeah, I, uh, and maybe I need to further articulate. Yeah, and so just for what it's worth, I'm totally aligned there. And this is something that, you know, when there was discussion of a CNI 2.0, we'd have containerized pods we'd be running in what CNI um, folks like to call a thick plug-in um, type of mode, right? There, Where you have a resident daemon running in a pod as opposed to, running as a one-shot binary um, on disk. So yeah, totally. Um, this this definitely helps me there. I think what uh, I'm trying to think of is if I am a network plugin and I am um uh, I'm on the critical path to creating um your pod. And I need to do fancy pants stuff like accessing the API. Is there more information that I could get that's, you know, already available as part of whatever your pod creation process? Could I get more there in order to be more efficient and have a less um, two-way communication with the API? Um, that's the kind of thing that I'm trying to, to think about. I don't know that there's necessarily all the answers, um, here. I just thought that I would, um, talk, toss that out there, um, as one, um, that may come down to like, you know, good logging practices, you know, you could provide, you know, what something's about to do with the information at hand. And that's written out to, you know, available through kubectl logs, your logging mechanism. Um, is that helpful? I'm trying to, because I understand what you're trying to do because it's like, you know, 
what we're trying to you kind of tackle is like it takes too long. I mean, I guess to paraphrase uh, what you're trying to get at is like it takes too long to troubleshoot, correct? And when you do troubleshoot it, you're missing the appropriate information to take action and resolve. Um, well, uh, certainly the, there's a component of that, but I guess what I, uh, really, it's like, I, I feel like my, since my application has to query Kubernetes to say, Hey, what's the, um, annotation on this pod and then query a, cu a custom resource to say, what's the coast custom resource associated with this for this information? Um, it's those two things that I have to do are like another point of failure for my process. And I'm wondering if there's a way through k &I that maybe I could get more information up front rather than having to have my process query the API again. Yeah. That's, oh, yeah. I'm seeing what you're saying. Sorry. So it's okay. It, in the current POC, all the labels and metadata on that pod are passed via the RPC call. So you actually yeah. no longer need to query uh, the Kube API for the pod object. Is I think the intention yeah. was to actually pass a lot of that information because a common theme when I did go through several Kubernetes network plugins is, and that was, sorry, that was one of my reasons for the goals as well, uh, is that most people were querying the pod object from the Kube API on top of, you know, 10 other custom resources. So we can't obviously, you know, solve all of those problems, but we can at least give you, hey, this is the pod object. Uh, here's your labels, here's your annotations. Here's whatever else you need uh, to get away with. But however, like, yeah, for your use case, obviously the network attachment definition isn't necessarily known. Um, and that would be, you know, the controller side of, you know, yes. the same network runtime. And, but you at least get your annotations. And that's a, and that's a huge savings. And here's the other thing too, at least, and I know... Um, being a little bit um, centric to my use case, but it's helping me um, think think through it is, um, yeah, so if I have to query the API for a um, additional custom resource, right, which I do have to do, um, if I'm in a, just like one shot CNI mode, then I have no choice but to go and query for that every time. But in more of a like um, controller type pattern here, you know, maybe I could have already have queried for that, right? So that I'm already um, uh, aware of what's happened. I know it hasn't changed since the last time. So I'm just operating from a cache. Cool. That's awesome. I made a note to myself. I have one more question um, for one of the goals, if we have a moment to. Um, Pete, you go ahead. I can't hear sorry, you. Sorry, I'm hear you? unable to work in okay. mute button. Um, yeah, so it's really just a clarification on scope. Um, I think in a couple of areas. Firstly, uh, so we've got all these wonderful goals. The way this is obviously going to happen is we will have an we'll have an implementation to start with that won't deliver on all these goals, and then it will evolve. Is that multiple caps? I mean, what's the kind of scope? How does that happen? And tied to that, one of the things we that K and I talks about it. It's an interface to a new daemon or a new network plugin that'll do some some work where, where people will write their own or will have a reference implementation. It does this cap cover the interface and a reference implementation, or are they separate? To the first one, do you mind if I go, Mike, or do you want to go? Go for it. To the first one, we already know that we're going to have a couple of different caps. Some of them are in support of the main one, but I think the the door is open for this to branch out into multiple caps once right. we know that we have that need. But the second one, um, we are looking at having a reference implementation. So we actually have a tool called Blixt, which came out of the gateway API project. 
project and is an implementation of Gateway API. Was that because we figured Linux was the most neutral uh, data plane that nobody would have any opposition to being in upstream Kubernetes? Um, but it's then because it's working at that level and like the lower levels uh, of Linux and it's got eBPF and all this other stuff, it's potentially in a really good place to do KNI. So there's an opportunity, we're not sure of it, but there's an opportunity for that to end up having a reference implementation um, for KNI. And then obviously there's the POC, which I think Zappa is hoping to put, we're hoping to put in like whatever repo we come up with under like prototype for now or something like that. Um, yeah. Go ahead, Mike. Yeah, for the multiple caps. So, and that's like a good question. I have looked at what other people have done, like device plugin, DRA, and more, because it does look like the life cycle of cap and features, you know, extend not just multiple Kubernetes releases, but it's like years. So like, and I think, you know, we can always play this by year, but it's like, you know, we would definitely have our initial scope. And then, you know, Ideally, you know, the k &I ecosystem grows into a way where, you know, we can have the, a working group that, you know, proposes changes and, you know, like, as I said, like update interface or something, or you need to do this new, uh, new feature. Well, it probably would be either covered on the original cap or under like a k &I enhancement proposal approach. It's not clear and defined how how this is going to work yet. So if someone actually is like, hey, I have, you know, experience doing this, you should have multiple caps where you have original one and you refer to the new one and just modify it, that would be great. Indeed. Go ahead, Doug. He just lowered his hand. Oh, why did my hand just back up? Oh, geez, you know. Um, all right, I will try to um, keep uh, keep this brief. But um, Shane, the goal you mentioned um, earlier, second in the list of goals, provide Kubernetes API for the creation, configuration, and management of interfaces. Um, that absolutely makes sense to me. The, the one question I have is, is this intended to be um, like data objects that are stored by Kubernetes or more of the transport um, between um, K and I and yeah, um, yeah. the associated components? Yeah, I know what you're saying. Open to suggestion. Okay. Very open to suggestion at this point. Um, the yeah. more concrete things that I've, I've been thinking about are like being able to like list what networks are there and like know how to get to what is doing IPAM for them, that kind of thing. But also I would love to be in a position where you could know what the routing table for a pod is, for instance. So there's potentially a lot of scope there, but it's all open for suggestion. Okay, cool. That's helpful. Thank you. That covers it for me. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, we'd love to have your help influence that. So please, please do help us with that. Um, I would just had my hand up to add on to the previous part conversation. Mike and I have talked about, because we know how big this is going to be, um, trying to take some of the successes we saw with the Gateway API project in terms of process. Some of the, there's some things that organically grew up in that project that taught us how to take a big project and uh, kind of make it work and move it forward and make sure that we were bringing everyone along for the ride. Like nobody felt like they, were, they weren't being properly represented. So we were thinking about doing this initial, I think I'm just reiterating what Mike just said basically, but this initial cap, getting it into a provisional state and saying, okay, this is kind of the groundwork. We're not trying to go into implementable yet. We just want it in provisional state and then start a working group, start a repository and then do something like KNEPs, we called them K and I enhancement proposals. They'd be just pronounced NEP, uh, which is modeled after the gateway API gaps to start doing our own more enclosed um, kind of iterations on this thing just within the working group. And then those things would basically be, you know, built over time and then brought back to the major cap and then do more of that and then bring it back to the, the main cap. Um, just as a point of process um, to try to keep everything kind of flowing and not, make sure people don't feel stuck and so forth. Um, so that was kind of how we were thinking about it, was taking a lot of uh, the success we've seen in the Gateway API and using that as a model for a project. Anything you want to add to that, Mike? 
No, that sounds reasonable. I was going to say we probably should uh, shut this one down and close it yep. out as it is now 10 o'clock. Okay. Yeah, thank you everybody for coming. Please do add notes and stuff to the doc. We will have a, a, K, a SIG Network KNI channel popping up in Slack as soon as somebody merges the PR um, so we can stay coordinated there as well. Really appreciate everybody coming in for your help. Love to hear more user stories and we'll see you next time in a couple weeks. Thanks, everybody. Definitely. Have a good one.